Freenias 11.2 release on December 5th, 2018, which is actually the same day I downloaded it, but I waited till today, Thursday, December 13th, 2018, to talk about it because I wanted to run it and give you my opinion. And we've been running this in full production. We use this to uh, store lots of our data. My video editing is going to it as we speak because I'm recording and it's where we dump all the video files and I do all my editing work on it. And we've been doing this since release candidate, storing all of our uh, stuff on there, but we moved everything that was like mission critical, I guess you could say, from our other free NAS to this free NAS and it hasn't had a problem at all. Um, one minor noted exception, and I'll just get this out there. I've I, Other people I think have had the same issue. I've not really dug into it because it just doesn't bother me. So it's on my to-do list to file a bug report. Um, it doesn't seem to have any dashboard data in here. I thought that was kind of odd because it was there in the beta and the full release. That's the only problem I've had with the full release. That's it. And it's such a minor one. And it's like I said, I'll get it on my to-do list. Uh, for those of you wondering, this is a super micro board with a uh, Intel Xeon CPU E5 2620 at two gigahertz, total 24 cores. So that's the system I'm running. And in the beta, I had dashboard data here. And now in the not beta, I don't. So Let's run down some of the major change lists they did though. First thing, obviously everyone noticed is they completely did a UI change. I think it needed a facelift. I was used to the way things were, but I didn't think they were great, but they were how they were because they took a system that they had this interface for a long time. But of course, anytime you uh, change an interface, you, you instantly divide the people who want everything to stay exactly the same. Um, and then all the other people that go, I have to have something new and fresh. I kind of am the new and fresh guy. Maybe when I'm older and grayer, my opinions might change. But for now, in my 40s, I still think I like new interfaces, uh, especially when they add to the layout and make things kind of make more sense. And I believe that's what they've done with this new UI. I don't have a problem with it. The other big change is going to be the Warden to IO cage. And that's a jail system that runs within BSD. They moved over to it, and I can leave a link. They go in a little bit more depth on the IX Systems uh, YouTube channel about why they changed it and the API interfaces and everything else related to how they script things. It's a good change. IO cage offers some more flexibility and hopefully will be better for package maintainers to uh, maintain updates and things like that. That is sometimes people complain about that, though a lot of people want to run Plex on here. I'm going to get to a whole new series of videos on doing all the same things in the new free NAS with the new UI, with the new version, including a Plex setup. But yes, I know there's going to be slight version differences because the package maintainers are community driven. So sometimes they're a slight version behind That's Hopefully this will help resolve some of this. The Cloud Sync. This, I'm going to be doing a real in-depth video. I'm really excited about this. It doesn't just add the ability to encrypt it, but they've added all kinds of uh, bells and whistles to this. This is exciting. This is what the new interface looks like. They have a lot of options they baked in. So first you go to the Cloud Credentials and you set up the credentials and then you go to the Cloud Tasks and it's going to set up the task of like actually sending the data. But they've got Amazon, Amazon S3, Backblaze B2, Box, Dropbox, FTP, Google Cloud Source, Google Drive, just an HTTP push, Hubic, Mega, Azure, Blob Storage, which is cool, OneDrive, pCloud. These are a couple of the other ones that are neat too. WebDAV, F SFTP, and Yandex. So FSTP, um, this is a nice secure file transfer protocol and we can now probably have our own in, I'm going to do some experiment with exactly how this works, uh, but I like it when you can, and a lot of people do this, as much as we like storage in the cloud and things like that, it is sometimes a bit pricey. And so this is an option where you maybe have two locations and you buy a bunch of drives and put them in each location. You can set these up. Of course, another way to do this is replication if you have two free NAS servers, but SFTP might be an option because that's what you have access to on some other server. Uh, so I'm going to be doing a whole video uh, covering all the cloud syncing options on there. I've I've already done a video on showing how to do the backups uh, using PF uh, replication built into ZFS, so the replication tasks and how it replicates. I've done a video on that. I'm, I may do a follow-up one because I, I didn't do a restore video. You do it in reverse, but there's actually, I guess, a little bit more to it. People wanted to kind of follow a process. Um, so I, be, I will have a whole another series of videos on that as well. One of the other kind of novel things I thought that was cool is now they support built-ins or self-encrypting drives. And 
Of course, they baked this in prior to, roll back to my other video, uh, where I talk about self-encrypting drives not quite being what they said, this is the same problem. So uh, people who got that story wrong, and it's one of the reasons I did a YouTube video on it, um, the self-encrypting drives is because the operating system said, hey, we'll just pass this job off to the drives because they've got chips dedicated to it so we don't see any type of performance hit, and those guys are doing it right. Well, people blamed Microsoft incorrectly because they relied on that as well. Um, Unfortunately, it turns out some of the self-encrypting drives are not properly self-encrypting themselves in a very secure manner. I'll leave a link to that video if you haven't seen it. Um, but this would be the same flaw if they did it because they're just passing it off. I highly recommend, and this is how we always set our servers up because I just don't want to have to think about what's on there. Uh, you know, like. Do I create some secure, not secure? What if a piece of secure data that I care about gets on there? I don't ever want to think about that. I just lock up everything. That's the easier way to do it. So uh, we have on our server here, our, da our data sets are always encrypted top to bottom, not relying on the drives uh, set. That's a nice extra layer, I think, but I prefer it to simply be encrypted using the ZFS encryption Make sure you download your backup key. By the way, they do a nice job of warning you that you need to download your backup key, which is nice. I'm so happy to see that because uh, I've had unfortunate numbers of people contact me for support. And I just I have to say, no, they did a great job on encryption and you didn't back up your keys. I'm sorry. Um, it did exactly what it's supposed to do. There's not like a workaround for that if you're missing the keys. Uh, good luck with that. So um, they... Having the set in there is nice, being able to put the password in a drive to encrypt it, but uh, still, I trust this more, especially as we've learned, like I said, so won't dwell on that much. Now, there's just a ton of other tweaking and performance. OpenZFS is up to date, so there's lots of little tweaking behind the scenes. Uh, they also, and I have not done any testing with it, and I will try a little more. I just, I didn't like it at all under 11.1. Maybe under 11.2, they've gotten better, but uh, they did a lot of engineering around the virtual machine system on there, and I have a use case for it, and you may have seen my replies on YouTube. I don't have a use case, and that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm very busy with projects, so I do things in video videos based on things I have use cases for most of the time. I do like having fun, but uh, I have a limited time sometimes to have fun and try random ideas. One of my use cases is going to be, um, and people directly, this is what I plan to do, we're going to build an 11.2 machine and we're going to build a Linux VM to run some of the Unify stuff, including all the cameras, so we can actually build a Unify camera system or other camera systems, by the way. There's a, a couple other ones we're looking at um, that you can get the software for. This is not free software. This is all licensed software because um, it's for some commercial projects, but running it inside of a single machine that can handle all the storage because we've actually done this for uh, larger scale ones where we build one machine uh, to handle the cameras, but then it passes it all off to FreeNAS because they need 128 terabytes of storage uh, because of the volume of video they have, just rows and rows of storage. So uh, this might be a fun option where we can take and do uh, build it all within one machine and as long as it's stable crash resistant and we can torture test it by randomly unplugging it and making sure nothing gets corrupted we'd be really excited if the VMs hold up to that. That's it's I have absolute trust in OpenZFS, uh, limited trust in how good the VM system is. And I'm just being a skeptic uh, because we care so much about stability. And it just seemed a little bit buggy when I tried using it in 11.1. .1. But they did a lot of engineering, a lot of rewriting, a lot of good behind the scenes stuff. And one of the things that they did that's important um, was making sure that the virtual machines and memory manager are talking back and forth because ZFS, People call it a memory hog. It's not a memory hog. It just doesn't let you have a bunch of free RAM that is not being in use because any memory not used is wasted memory. And so ZFS will dedicate massive amounts of memory to the ARC, which is the cache, the active adaptive replacement cache. Anyways, it's where a whole lot of memory uh, goes. That way we can cache the files and make it more efficient. And when you start up a VM, you are bumping into that. So they've engineered it so it uh, does it very smoothly. And uh, like I said, I'm going to do some testing with it and learn. Uh, they still have net data, which is also the reason why. Let me go ahead and refresh this page. I don't care much about the uh, menu issues I mentioned before. But uh, net data is way better tool for doing this. Uh, that's why, you know, the graph's missing on the front page of it. Not really a huge deal. Uh, it just doesn't give me enough data compared to net data, which is such a wonderful project. Uh, I get pretty graphs. I can dig in and go, what are the disks doing now? And what, you know, how much load are they under and all that fun stuff. So look, oh, this is how much it's writing. And then we can always go here. 
I'll stretch it out. And we can see where I had some peak issues, and I can see what time I was doing it. Or right here when we had a peak. So definitely kind of cool. I like that data. I've been a big fan of it for a while. It definitely gets the job done uh, and way easier to read than any of those basic graphs that they included. There we go. This is where I was moving some VMs around for another project uh, today. So this is what it looks like when you shuffle some VMs around and duplicate them. Uh, so yeah, puts a little bit of heavy load on the system. And in here, we can actually go up. There's what it looks like on the server side. Here's what the load looks like there. Here's what the disk looks like. Here's what the RAM change was when we did that. So on and so forth. So like I said, I've been really happy with it. I haven't really had any problems. Uh, I've not done a lot with the jails. I've done playing with it while it was in beta. Now that it's in full release, I'm gonna go through and test each one. Of course, a lot of people wanna run Nextcloud. A lot of people wanna run uh, Plex. So I'll be digging into those and seeing how they work. And like I said, Go ahead and load it. I, I really didn't have a problem. I know you. if you have a bunch of jails, though, be cautious because it, it, there's that change. And I'm not sure how well, because I haven't tested this, any of the warden stuff is going to translate over. They will let you translate it, but uh, go into forums and spend some time there uh, with some of that. But I'm excited about the release, excited about uh, the free NAS in general. I just It's been my go-to solid project for uh, enterprise storage, and it's, it's a good system still. And I love these enhancements in the new UI, even though you may hate it. Leave your thoughts and comments below and uh, go from there and if you have a bug don't just complain about it like i kind of did with the front page bug issue with the graphs uh, file a bug report that's how these things get fixed thanks thanks for watching if you like this video go ahead and click the thumbs up leave us some feedback below to let us know any details what you like and didn't like as well because we love hearing the feedback or if you just want to say thanks leave a comment if you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.